My name is Brant Boisvert. I'm with Red Point Audiovisual out of Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And we're in the multi-purpose room, and uh, I'm just going to kind of show you uh, the steps and sequence of turning it on and how to plug in a computer and turn the volume up and down. All right, so this room has uh, two computer input setups. We have one in the front of the room. We're in the front of the room right now. And then we also have one in the rear of the room. Um, you have your standard 15-pin VGA and audio. Uh, that's going to be your analog video. Um, more older computers uh, have this uh, output on computers. So if you still have an old computer, most likely you'll be hooking up uh, with this VGA and audio. Uh, the newer computers nowadays have digital video outputs, which is just an HDMI. Uh, so you'll have uh, an HDMI output on your computer. You'll just take a, a small HDMI cord and plug it up here. Um, uh, the, it's identical on the rear input plate at the back of the room. All right, so like I mentioned before, um, this is a VGA cable. This will be on your older computers. Um, on your computer, it'll look something like that. Uh, so you'll just take that, plug it in to your computer, and then your other end looks identical, and it'll just plug into the wall like so. Um, your computer should automatically switch to the function it's needed. It's going to recognize it as uh, another monitor. It should do that already. Um, if it doesn't, usually it's in your F1 through your F12 buttons. So you'll do function and whatever looks like a projector or another screen on those buttons is what you'll hit. Uh, along with the uh, VGA, uh, you'll have an audio cable that looks like this. Um, we call it an eighth inch connector. Uh, people know it as a 3.5 millimeter, just like a headphone jack. Um, on the side of your computer, you will have two most likely 3.5 millimeter jacks. One is for a microphone and one you'll see a picture of headphones. That's the one you want. You'll plug that in like so. And then the other end is identical and that'll go into the audio. So right now, that'll, this will push your video and this will push the audio from your computer. Uh, the newer computers, we'll take all those out. The newer computers will have HDMI output. So that is what a connector looks like on the cable. And for the computer, that is what it'll look like on the side of the computer. So. Again, you'll just take your, take your cord, plug it into your computer, take the other end, which is identical, and then you'll plug it in to the HDMI slot. Again, your computer should recognize it. It should switch automatically, but if it doesn't, same again, function, F, whatever your display button is. It's different on other computers, so can't really tell you a specific. All right, uh, now we're gonna show you the control panel. Um, whether or not you choose the HDMI or the VGA front or back input plate, uh, this control panel will let you uh, choose which one that you're gonna, you're gonna play your video through. Uh, like I mentioned before, there's a front input plate and a rear input plate. And this control panel is set up in that sequence. So if you can read, it'll say HDMI front, uh, PC front, uh, and then your audio, PC audio and HDMI audio. So what that means, if you're in the front input plate and you want to hook up your HDMI, uh, all you'll have to do is come to this plate and hit HDMI front. I already have it lit, but I'll show you what it'll look like. Uh, when it's, uh, the LED is red, you know that you, are, uh, you have chose the HDMI front. Um, this is kind of uh, irrelevant, but it'll, uh, It'll switch it anyway. HDMI carries audio, which is uh, for another video, but uh, you do have to choose the HM HDMI audio or it won't link the audios. Um, so uh, if it's on PC audio, you won't get the audio from the HDMI. You'll have to click both of those. Um, so if you were to choose, uh, if you wanted to use your VGA out of the computer, all you'd, like I said, you just have to choose the PC front and the PC audio, PC meaning uh, the VGA. Um, 
Uh, same for the rear. If you're if you want to present from the rear of the room, it's the same sequence. You have HDMI rear and PC rear, and then your your audios as well. Um, as soon as you hit this, it'll switch from uh, one input to the other. So ultimately, you could have two computers hooked up, uh, one in the front of the room and one in the rear of the room. And if you wanted to just switch back and forth, you just have to go HDMI front to HDMI rear, and the system will automatically change from one computer to another. Um, you also have a mute function. So if you have audio going or um, uh, a presentation that you just want to mute the audio to, you would hit mute, and it, it would uh, it'd bring the volume all the way down. You wouldn't be able to hear it. Off is kind of uh, just a, a placeholder. It doesn't turn the system off, but it'll wipe the inputs out from the screen. So you can hit off, and the inputs that were projected on the screen in the display will uh, no longer be there anymore. Uh, you also have a volume control. This is the analog volume control. So if you have something playing in HDMI front and you just want a little more volume out of it, you can, you can go up and down. Don't mind the LED, uh, it'll click and the LED won't move always. Uh, it's, it's going in increments of five decibels. So uh, one click will turn the volume up despite what the LED uh, indicators say. Which part of the room is front and which part is rear? Uh, front, rear. No, I mean, is the front? Oh, front. Is, front, rear. Is the uh, front is the east wall. Rear is the west wall. Okay, you want me to say that? Well, that's what, yes. Okay. I'm, I'm asking, we're on, probably on there now, but it's like maybe. Yeah, his, obviously, his audio is much stronger, but if you, you wanted to restate it. it. Okay. Oh, and you're still recording. Yeah, I'm, okay. I'm, okay. Um, you want to go back to you now? Are we through? Oh, no. Are we through with the switch? Uh, well, we are. I don't know which one's front and which one's rear. Sure. Yeah. Um, uh, the front wall um, I've indicated on this is the east wall, and that wall is the one with the projector screen. Uh, the uh, west wall is the rear, and that's the one with the TV, the display. All right, we are now in the rack room of the multi-purpose room. Uh, the door is located on the west wall, uh, directly behind the big TV on, the, on that same wall. Um, uh, we are now at the, the rack, and I'm going to just kind of go step by step what a uh, piece of equipment uh, is doing and, and how it's involved in the system. All right, so I'm just going to start from the, the top and work my way down to the bottom. Um, this piece of equipment right here is called a power conditioner, and that's your on and off switch to the entire system. Um, it is okay and recommended to just leave this on the entire time. When I, I say this, but the entire system is fine to be on um, as far as the stuff in the, in the rack room, not necessarily the TV and the, the projector out there. Um, to, to turn this system on, you just have uh, an up-down switch right here, an on-off, and you'll just uh, you'll hit that on, and it'll sequence uh, each individual piece on. Uh, it won't power it up all at once. That'll cause a surge, so it does it in, in increments. Um, that's all this piece does. Again, if you just want to turn it off, you just hit it down, and it'll do the opposite. Uh, you guys are welcome to leave this on. It will not hurt the system at all. Um, but if you guys do go on uh, vacation or break, you, you're welcome to turn it off. All right, this is a wireless mic receiver. Uh, the multi-purpose room is equipped with two wireless mics, a handheld and a lapel that we'll show you uh, later on. Um, this uh, just receives the signal from the, the mic and, and distributes it uh, accordingly. It does have an on-off switch. Um, but these will always be on. You don't have to worry about turning that off. Uh, they're connected to that power conditioner above. So you can leave uh, all of this equipment on um, uh, prior to, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you can go ahead and just start over again. Do you want to start, okay, start it all over? over. It's not a big deal. Sure. Uh, this is a wireless mic receiver. Uh, the multi-purpose room is equipped with a uh, with two wireless mics, uh, a handheld mic and a lapel mic. Um, 
this just receives the signal from the, the wireless uh, transmitter and uh, directs it accordingly. Uh, it does have an on off switch. Uh, we uh, recommend just keeping that on at all times. It is plugged into the power conditioner which uh, controls the on off of that piece of equipment. This is the second receiver for the wireless mics, um, uh, exactly identical to uh, the one prior. Uh, same news, same on-off sequence. Uh, this piece is the Crestron control processor. This is kind of the, the computer of the whole, the whole system. Um, and this is the actual piece of equipment that is switching your video and your audio. Um, so if I had to choose a, the most important piece in this rack, this, this would be it. Um, uh, we showed you that control button panel outside in the multi-purpose room. This can do the same thing if need be. If for some reason that goes out, uh, this is kind of a secondary um, way of switching. And if you, you can see it has, uh, it's labeled VGA and HDMI. And that's the, the same as out there. So one and two will be your two HDMI out inputs and your one and two for the VGA will be your, your two VGA inputs. Um, would one be the front and two be the rear? Uh, one would be the... Go ahead and just say that for okay. us. Okay. Uh, one, uh, in, sorry, input one will be the front wall plate, uh, both VGA and HDMI. Input two is the rear wall plate, both HDMI and VGA. Uh, there's not much else that you'll have to, to worry about this. Um, this can kind of just stay in the rack and, and do what it's meant to do. Uh, this next piece is the audio mixer. So this will control the wireless mics and the computer volume and uh, the EQ of it. Um, if we want to get down and dirty here, uh, each uh, one of these lines is a separate channel. So we're only using three right now. This first one is uh, a wireless mic, it's the lapel. And just, uh, I'm gonna start from the bottom to the top here. You'll have uh, a pan, which is uh, panning left and right. So a stereo signal has a left and right signal. That'll just pan from one to the other. Uh, the next two, the, the maroon colored ones are auxiliaries. Uh, this system has no auxiliary, so th these two uh, maroon knobs will never be used. Um, the next two, the, the bluish ones, are your, your EQ, or your bass and your treble, if you will. Uh, this one uh, next up is your, your bass, uh, or your low end is, is what it's labeled. Uh, turning it up to the right, going uh, clockwise, will give you more bass or more low end. Uh, opposite if you turn it counterclockwise. Uh, same with your high, your, your treble. If you turn it clockwise, it'll give you more, uh, more high frequency noise in, in the audio system. You wanna be careful with that. That's where you'll get your, your feedback and your, your noisy, unwanted um, stuff. Uh, the very top one is your trim. This is, uh, this is kind of an important one. Uh, it is, most people think it's a volume control, but uh, really it's, uh, it's, it's a gateway. Um, this is telling the mixer how much volume can be controlled with this mixer. So the, if you turn this clockwise, you're, you're opening the gate really wide and you're gonna get all sorts of unwanted noise, very loud. Uh, very uh, distorted probably. You'll probably clip the system and it's just not good. So you wanna keep these. Um, I have the microphones uh, around uh, nine o'clock, eight o'clock. Um, and you kinda of wanna keep them there. If um, this, this next piece, I'll get back to that, is your, is your fader, your volume fader. So this is gonna be your individual volume for each channel. So down all the way, will be all the way down, up, will be all the way up. If, when you look at this, you'll see numbers on the left side of it. Uh, most of them are in the negatives. That, that's a, a decibel rating. So right now it's at negative five dB decibels. Um, once you get past zero and you're starting to get into the positives, the positive dB, 
that's where you can bring this back down and adjust your trim just a little bit. That'll balance it out and give you a little more headroom. Um, everything I'm saying is identical on every uh, line, every channel. Um, the, the two microphones, which are in one and three, are kind of uh, identical right now, kind of match the same. The one in the center is your computer uh, audio input volume. So that one is going to be a line level signal compared to the mic level. It's going to be a little lower. Um, so you're going to want to have this a little bit higher. I had the trim knob about 12 o'clock right now, and I'm sitting about 0 dB. Um, the high and low EQ is uh, personal preference. Uh, if you like a little more low end, you can turn the low end up. If you don't like it, you can take it out. Um, moving all the way to the right here, this is a master volume. So this one fader will control all three of these, well, technically all 12 of these uh, in sequence. So I turn this up, it's gonna turn everything up. If I turn it down, it's gonna turn everything down as opposed to the individual volume controls. Uh, per channel. This last piece uh, is the amplifier. So this is what's powering all the speakers in the multi-purpose room. Um, very simple. Don't really have to mess with this at all. It does have an on-off switch, but same goes as the, the wireless receivers up there. If you just keep it on, the power conditioner at the top will control the on-off. Um, that's really all you need to know about this. Uh, pretty simple and straightforward. And don't touch it. <laughs> All right, we're out here in the multi-purpose room again. I'm gonna show you the, the wireless mics uh, referenced as the transmitter. Um, this is one, it's the lapel. Um, and it's, uh, it's more of a vocal uh, presentation mic. Um, and I'll, I'll kind of just run through how it goes, turns on. Uh, there's a power button uh, right there and you just kind of hold it until the LED flashes and it'll come on. I'm gonna turn it off so we don't get any extra. Mike, but the way that it goes on is kind of, if you can see my setup, um, this uh, belt pack will clip to your belt or your pocket. Uh, you can stick it in the back pocket or just clip it right to your belt by this uh, loop. And then you'll run the wire through your shirt or behind your back and it'll clip just like uh, he has mine right here, right on a shirt collar, a tie, um, anything that is close to uh, your mouth. The, the rule of thumb and, uh, is basically if you do a hang loose sign, you kind of want to be that distance away from your mouth. Looking straight, not looking down. Uh, that's a good distance to put that microphone. Uh, next we have uh, the handheld wireless transmitter. Uh, same concept. The power button is at the bottom of the microphone. You will hold it to turn it on. So you see the LED come on, uh, hold it to turn it off. Uh, very straightforward. Um, keep it, again, the, the same distance away. Uh, pretty easy. All right, uh, these are the remote controls uh, for the multi-purpose room. Um, the projector, the TV, and the, the projection screen. Uh, just like any other household remote, uh, you have an on and off, and you can get into detail with the rest of the things. You have your menu and your uh, um, volume up and down. Those des necessarily don't mean anything because it's an uh, integrated system, so you don't have to worry about volume up and down on this. Basically, you'll just turn the, the displays on and off with this. Uh, this is the projector. Again, you just have your, your power button. Uh, I'm sorry, this is the TV. Uh, You'll just have your power button, you're gonna turn it on and off. You have an input button uh, that'll source through the inputs, but right now there's only one input on that TV, which is uh, HDMI one. Uh, same goes with the projector. The only input that we have to that is HDMI one. Um, this is a screen, the screen control. This is very simple. Uh, you have your screen up, screen down, and screen stop. So most likely you'll come into the room and you'll hit screen down uh, until you reached its desired height, um, and then you just hit screen stop. And when you're done presenting, you can hit screen up and let it go, and it'll go all the way up. Uh, right now we're at the, the JBL speakers. You'll find that uh, at the front of the room, uh, left and right of the projection screen. 
um, we're going to get in here and I'm going to show you what not to do. We're close in here to the side of the speaker. Um, it has some dials on uh, the side here that are very exposed and I just kind of want to go through them. Um, these shouldn't be touched at all, but since they're so exposed, uh, I just want to tell you what they are so you know what will happen. Um, this top one is uh, called your tap select. So uh, speakers have uh, different ohmage. So you'll have an eight ohm speaker and you'll have a 70 volt speaker. This is a 70 volt system. So this is how it tells the speaker what signal it's getting. So we have it right now on a 70 volt tap setting. So if this got changed at all and it got moved to eight ohm, uh, it could get really loud and it could uh, uh, ruin the system. It could blow the speaker or ruin the amplifier. So uh, tap select, uh, please do not touch. Um, the second one down is, is an equalizer. This one's uh, still uh, a don't touch situation, but not as uh, devastating as the top one can be. It's just uh, a speech and music equalizer. Uh, it's set up for a speech uh, uh, EQ. So basically that's going to bring out a little more low end and uh, uh, turn down the highs of, of the speaker. If it's switched to music, it'll uh, again bring in some more low end and um, bring in some highs and, and just make it sound more for a, a music level. Uh, again, would rather, rather not touch, uh, but it's okay if, uh, if, if need be. Um, the very bottom one is your is your coverage, so the the speaker itself can can form the the sound waves to a wide pattern or a uh, a more vertical narrow pattern. Um, this is uh, set to a um, a, a wide pattern. It's going to distribute more left and right than it will focus in and try to go far. Um, this. Uh, needs to stay where it is um, on the wide so uh, people listening to the speaker won't get any any weird sounds. Um, again, uh, try not to, to touch these. Uh, I know they're exposed and, and very welcoming, but uh, we'll keep those where they are.